Here is a simple method for flow testing, done without using fancy digital flow meters or inline gauges. We are going to flow test the hose and nozzle just like it would be used at a fire. We'll do this while gathering information we can use to do more complicated things like using fog nozzles and creating pump charts. Prior to demonstrating the flow test, here are a few terms and concepts that must be identified. We'll be recording our pump discharge pressure at the panel. We'll be finding and determining the friction loss in the hose between the panel and the nozzle. And finally, we'll be recording the tip pressure using a pitot gauge. Besides finding accurate pressures for the fire ground, we will use the data we get to determine the true coefficient of the hose, which will allow us to do accurate hydraulic equations. We need that true coefficient because most hose is not true diameter and is actually larger than we think. Knowing the true coefficient will enable us to accurately pump oversized attack hose. We also need to know if there is any internal plumbing loss or gain between the pump panel gauge and the discharge. If you go behind your pump panel and you look at the wires coming from your gauges, you'll notice they likely don't connect and read from the discharge exactly, but somewhere else back in the system. What this often does is cause less water or more water than is expected to come out of the discharge, even though the pump panel gauge you are reading says it is correct. To perform this test, you will need 300 feet of identical hose. You'll need a smoothbore nozzle and a handheld pedal gauge. You'll also need something to document the numbers you get. When we flow test, we start with a plan, we document our findings, and we wait to analyze them until after the test is complete. So a 300 feet of hose, divided up into three 100 foot lengths, attach the first length to the discharge, and of course put the nozzle on the other end. Make sure it won't kink once it's charged. Have the operator increase or decrease the pump discharge pressure until you achieve exactly 50 at the tip. You'll document the pump discharge pressure once you have 50 at the tip. Here we have 60. Now we'll shut down that first length, move the nozzle over and attach the second 100 foot length for a total of 200 feet and repeat the same process. Documenting the exact pump discharge pressure when we have 50 at the tip. Here we get 50 at the tip through 200 feet of hose at 80 PSI, pump discharge pressure. Finally, we'll connect the third length and do the same test through 300 feet. There's no reason you have to stop at 300 feet. Continuing on to 400 and 500 just gets you more data. For today though, we'll do 300 feet. see here through 300 feet of hose to get 50 at the tip our pump discharge pressure is approximately 92 to 95 now let's take a closer look at the numbers these are the numbers that we got on our original flow test that we use today for fire ground operations you'll notice 
At first, at 100 feet, was 60. It increased to 75 and then 90. It changed by 15 every time. And that gave us our friction loss in 100 feet of hose that we use today. It's possible for those numbers to be more variable and change by say 14 or 16 each time. It's up to you to identify the average number of change in order to determine your friction loss. I recommend doing the test many times to make sure that you are accurate. Now that we know the accurate friction loss in our hose of 15, there's actually more information we can find. If you do the math, 50 at the tip plus 15 per 100, and you look at what we have on our documentation, it should have gone 65, 80, 95. Why is it reading five low every time? Well, that consistent five PSI difference is due to the plumbing inside our engine. Identifying a trend like this allows you to create an accurate pump chart. For example, on our pump chart, two and a half hose lines are pumped five PSI lower than the math says they should be. And in reality, this gives our firefighters 50 at the tip and the correct flow. Finally, and bear with me, we can do some math and find the true coefficient because we know the friction loss. We've all solved for friction loss when we've learned to pump. All we need to do is reverse that equation knowing the friction loss to solve for the coefficient. As you can see on the bottom half here, I've used the friction loss to solve for the true coefficient, determining that the true coefficient of our two and a half hose is 1.7 which likely makes it 2.9 internal diameter instead of two and a half. This has some significant effects on the fire ground. First of all, it holds more water and is heavier. Additionally, most people use 15 PSI in order to flow around 250 GPM to 265 GPM. In this hose, 15 PSI per 100 feet will actually get you 300 GPM, which is a significant difference. Now that we can accurately pump our lines, we know exactly how much water is being delivered to the nozzle, allowing it to be operated effectively and as intended. We can use the data we obtained through the smoothbore and pitot test as a foundation for flowing fixed fog and even automatic fogs correctly. But don't forget, these nozzles are not like smooth bores. They're not a simple hole that allows water to pass through. They do create turbulence by stopping and, and manipulating the water. Especially for automatics, you'll need to get a digital flow meter and test your flows. You can take your information from the previous test and compare it to what the flow meter says. You're likely to find that an automatic fog nozzle is reducing your flow by 10 to 20%. Just like fog nozzles, inline gauges and digital flow meters create a little bit of turbulence when they're making their readings. That's why we kept them out of our test. If you go back, you'll notice we don't have them at the discharge and we definitely do not have any inline gauges or other meters behind the nozzle directly. That is an inaccurate way to get tip pressure. You really must invest in a handheld pitot gauge. A few quick notes about using this test. You should perform this test many times to compare results and weed out poor testing or mistakes. Basically, confirm your findings by repeating successful attempts several times. When you get consistency, you know you're on the right track. It should be performed on every discharge of every engine, which may seem daunting at first. Trust me, when I realized this was required to set up a pump chart that was actually accurate, I wanted to give up, at least momentarily. But eventually, after some testing, you will be able to identify trends in your apparatus and find ways to average out the results. And you'll start getting results that you expect, and you'll be able to create a good pump chart for your fleet. And that, of course, will leave you feeling pretty darn good.